You remember a few videos ago when I said I might be able to have some small amount of grudging respect for Venom Fang X because of his stance on homosexuality? Well, you can forget about it. Let's do this. So everybody's best darling little friend, Venom Fang X, has gone and made a video clarifying his position on homosexuality. And unfortunately, I went and made a couple of incorrect assumptions about his position that led me to believe he was rather more tolerant than he was. Let's have a look. Hello YouTube. I've been asked for a long time to make a video regarding the Bible and homosexuality. I'm aware that there is probably a very diverse group of people watching this video people who may be homosexual or may not be people who are Christians and who may not be so with that being said it's going to be difficult I imagine to address everyone's concerns regarding this extremely important and controversial issue so I'm going to do my best to treat this topic with fairness and yet maintain my convictions as a Christian I think it'll come as no real shock to anybody to discover that of those two, he really only manages to do the latter. Now, to be fair, he goes really in-depth. I, I mean, his video's kind of long. But I'm not so sure that he treats the subject fairly. Because, as he's basically just said, he is quite biased in favor of the Christian viewpoint. And, as we'll see, it doesn't necessarily have the validity he thinks it does. Let's move on. So, I've had the opportunity over the last few years to speak with many representatives of the homosexual community regarding this issue, and I feel like they've left the conversation feeling that my approach was much better than, well, some of the popularized views, such as this disgusting God-hates-fags approach, which many so-called Christians use. And you see my dilemma here. He kind of makes you want to, to respect the guy. I mean, you know, the whole Fred Phelps, God hates fags things. I mean, that is bad. And the fact that he's against that is wonderful. But unfortunately, there's more. I, un I understand that not everyone watching this video believes in Jesus Christ or, or believes in God. But this is a Christian video. And I have to say, so what? I mean, come on, think about it, Sean. Unless you can prove that what's in this book is factual, unless you can show me in a non-faith-based way that this is true and I should take it seriously, I have no reason to treat your video as anything other than your own personal opinion. I mean, I'll try to critique it on its own terms, but I don't know how much you expect that of me, because, you know, I just I don't buy what you're selling. What I'm hoping to address is the misrepresentations that so-called Christians have, have used in attempting to tackle the homosexual issue, which I feel has been a disservice to what the Bible actually teaches. Well, let's suppose, Sean, that you do in fact get your way, and this video becomes the go-to video for what Christians really think about homosexuality. Okay, now what? I mean, Christians think it, and they can't prove that any of it's true because it's all faith-based anyway. And so, why should any of us follow it? Why should any of us be on your side when, truthfully, what you have to say, it may not be as bad as God hates fags, but it's still not good. So why should we be on your side? Explain that one to me. We cannot choose our attractions. Being gay couldn't possibly be a choice. The Bible doesn't teach that it is. In fact, the Bible teaches clearly that it isn't. And we'll talk about that in a moment. But imagine you're walking down the street and you see someone you find attractive. That's not premeditated. That's just something that springs up within you. We are wired to be uh, attracted to certain things. We are sexual beings. Look, I know you're going to address this later, but let me go on record now saying that if your God wants to punish people for following through on their nature, which he gave them, I'm sorry, that God's an asshole, and I'm just glad he doesn't exist. And so, a homosexual who's attracted to the same sex, that's just the way they are. They were born that way, the Bible says. The Bible says that we were born in sin, sinful from the time our mother conceived us. Well, I don't think homosexuality is sin. And I also don't think your God exists. So, where does that leave us? 
A homosexual is not a homosexual willingly. They're, they can't choose their nature. To, in, a, in a sense, they're a homosexual against their will. Because if they could choose, well then they could just choose to be straight. Newsflash, Shawnee boy. I like being a lesbian. I tried being straight once. I had a boyfriend back in 2002, and while he was a very nice guy, it wasn't me. And I didn't really enjoy it that much. I mean, you know, I, don't get me wrong. I thought he was a great guy. I really did. But no, no, I prefer other women. That's just all there is to it. Why would I choose to be straight? Why would I? If I don't like it, if it sucks, if it's no fun, why would I do it? Now, that doesn't mean you're going to agree with everything that I say, and I may even offend you. <coughs> Yet, I'm not telling you that, number one, that God's love is not available to you. I'm not saying that God hates you. And, and nor am I saying that the homosexual is uh, any more immoral than, than any other group. Maybe not. But you are saying that we've been kind of handed a raw deal by your creator, assuming the fucker exists. I mean, basically what you're saying is that we have this flaw that makes us want something that we're not allowed to want. And if we try to get it, well, then we're going to hell. But if we don't try to get it, we'll spend our entire lives miserable because we don't get to actually do what makes us happy and doesn't hurt anybody. But, you know, we still have to follow this mandate to, to be straight all the time, even though it hurts us. And we have to do so... Not with the guarantee that, sure, we'll have a miserable life, but then we'll have a, a wonderful eternity in paradise. We're not actually told that by anybody but fallible humans who can't prove that what they're saying about the afterlife is true. So basically, we have a choice. We can either try to be miserable our entire lives on the potentially false hope that we will have a wonderful eternity, or we can do what makes us happy and doesn't hurt anybody and take the risk of going to an eternal hell for what? Not actually being bad people. Come on, one way or another, your plan sucks. Think about it, Venom. We all need to be aware of our biases. I admit, I'm a Christian, so I have a biased view of homosexuality because I'm coming at it from a biblical perspective. Well, then let me ask you, Venom. Have you ever looked at it from the other point of view? And have you ever considered that maybe your biblical perspective is completely freaking wrong? I mean... It's a possibility, right? You've considered that, right? And so it's the homosexual community who's lobbying for things like gay marriage, because that's what they want to do. That's how they want to go about making what they want socially acceptable. And I can understand that. Everyone wants to justify their views. And yet, at the same time, we do need to be careful that we're not attempting to justify something that is unjust. Unjust, Sean? Really? How on earth is it unjust to allow people who love each other and who are causing no harm whatsoever to have their union codified by the government? How does that make any sense? What's wrong with gay marriage? What harm does it do? And why on earth would God even be against it? It makes no sense. I'm sorry, but your position is pretty arbitrary. Now, what are the conditions for making something unjust? Who determines right from wrong? If you're asking from a biblical perspective, obviously the answer is God. Well, I'm not thinking from a biblical perspective, Sean, and I'm not going to until someone can prove to me that God exists by making faith no longer a factor. How many times do I have to say that one before it sinks in? But the fact is that you religious people who, who think gay marriage is wrong or against God or whatever, you want to have that codified into the law. You want to make it so that everyone has to obey the Bible, whether they believe it or not. And even if you personally don't feel that way, Sean, a lot of religious people do. And if you can't understand why that's wrong, why forcing biblical beliefs on people is wrong when they're not believers, well, I'm sorry, but you've got a lot to learn. And so, if we grant that God and the Bible are true, then God is the one who gets to tell us right from wrong. Well, wait a minute. Let's assume for a moment the Bible is true. Why does that mean that God's right? That doesn't make any sense. I mean, sure, okay, it says God's infallible. Well, that doesn't mean God can't be a complete dick. Doesn't mean God can't be a bigot. I mean, you want to say that God is love? What kind of asshole God creates a bunch of people, makes them homosexual, and says, don't follow your nature, 